All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Wren. I am the Member Services Librarian at the Capital District Library Council. I'd like to welcome you to our fifth virtual tour and the sixth tour in our series. Today we'll be touring the Shea Learning Center at Russell Sage College. Their Access Services Librarian, Regina Bertone, will be guiding us on our tour. During and after the tour, please submit any questions you may have through the Q&A option on Zoom. Regina plans to answer the questions as they come in during the tour. I'll now hand it over to you. Hi, everybody. It's really nice to see all of you, and I see the number of participants creeping up, so it's great. Now, I'm going to share my screen. Here we are. So, welcome to the Russell Sage College Library Shea Learning Center Virtual Tour. Here is a picture of a beautiful building in Troy. Welcome to the Russell Sage College Library. This is the library at the Troy campus. We are located at 65 First Street in Troy, across the street from the Troy Public Library. Russell Sage is a co-educational undergraduate and graduate college with two campuses, Albany and Troy, with over 50 bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degree choices. Over the years, Russell Sage has grown. First, it was a women's college. Then they added the men's division. Then Junior Sage Junior College of Albany, Sage Graduate School, and Sage Evening College. We've had variations of names, but we will always sage at heart. With a charter change effective July 1st, 2020, and beginning with the fall 2020 semester, Russell Sage College, Sage College of Albany, and Sage Graduate Schools united under one single name, Russell Sage College. So we are one college with two co-educational campuses in Albany and Troy, New York. My off I'm working on site. My office happens to be on the Albany campus. So upon entering the library, you will be greeted by this lovely foyer. One hidden gem of this library. If you turn around, you'll see that beautiful glass window hanging over our exterior door. There is a lot of natural light that happens throughout the library. This is the portrait of Mrs. Shea, who the building is named for. The creation of the Shea Learning Center was made possible by a bequest of more than $11 million from Lucille Rosenfeld Shea. As a lifelong lover of books, Shea dedicated her bequest to the Troy Campus Library. Shea attended Russell Sage in 1937 in 1938, had donated modestly to the college during her lifetime. It did not reveal the details of her bequest before her death. The library had been identified as a priority need for capital improvement in anticipation of a centennial campaign for SAGE's 100th anniversary in 2016. In addition to the building renovation, the bequests fund educational programs, lecture series, media and software, professional development, and continuing education and special collections. The bequest was announced in April of 2012. Library renovations began in 2013, and the Shea Learning Center reopened in August of 2013. The intent of the renovation was to integrate multiple services under one roof, making the new center a single destination for students to receive assistance from reference librarians, the IT help desk, tutoring from academic services, shared learning space, collaborative learning, and one-stop service. This portrait of Mrs. Shea was done by an Albany Stage Library work study student. Her name was Brooke Batista, 
and she was a graphic design major. So the themes of collaborative learning, sharing, and gathering a key aspect about the library that we will hear about more during this tour. Here is our main stopping point at the front of the building, if you turn around in the front door. Here, you can ask for general information, questions about circulation, checking out books, returning items, course reserves, and locate a reference librarian for more in-depth help. Due to COVID restrictions, we took safety precautions here while still providing the full service. We have a Zoom station, a computer set up here. So a student who is in the library in person can talk via Zoom and locate another library staff member. This applies to both library staffers who work from home and those of us who were able to work in the building. This Zoom station also has another purpose of setting up a future reference transaction between the student and reference librarian. We will address the reference transaction component at a future slide. So across from the main information reference desk, this art was a gift from another college donor, Donna Robinson Estevez. So the artist's name of this piece is Catherine Field. The title of the work is called Celebration. It was done in 2016. Composed of stainless steel, oil paint, and gold leaf. The idea is that it would be a meditative space where you would sit on the bench and just enjoy its beauty. So across, so walking into the next room on the first floor here, there was a large space for computer work and study for library users here. On this table that looks like a curly cube, we used to have much more computers there. So due to social distancing guidelines and the proper spacing, we have sent space out the computers to other parts in the library. So these photos right here, I hope they demonstrate about how we get creative with spacing while still having our printers available. We used to have three, now we have two printers for the students in this main first floor area. Also in this section, we carry our popular fiction, DVDs, and current periodicals. And there was a cleaning station as well. So throughout the library, we have the cleaning supplies strategically placed around. So also on the first floor, looking to the other side, we have study tables and more computers were spaced out here as well. So throughout the Troy Library, we have study rooms. So here is another connection to the theme of sharing and collaboration that was mentioned earlier. Now, our study spaces have a different, so our study spaces and study rooms have a different purpose now because of the pandemic. Over the summer, a few students were emailing the library, asking where they could go on campus to view a class on Zoom, if they wanted to watch a class that they had that was online. And so a few students presented us with this typical scenario. They would say, so let's say I'm taking a class in person at 8 a.m., so I have to be on campus. And then I have another class at 11 a.m. that happens to be online. And then I have another class at 3 p.m. that is in person. I don't want to drive back and forth to my house so I can watch my class and then come back to campus and that's travel, et cetera, et cetera. Where, where do I go on campus to watch my class online? So this resulted in the Russell Sage College Libraries. We revisited 
our study room policies. And you now offer reservations for students to use our study rooms for viewing their online classes. Students are allowed to make standing reservations for the complete semester. So if you have a class that's online, like on a Monday, you can book for the entire semester of that designated time slot. So I thought, I'm just thinking that's an access service of librarian. I thought it was wonderful to be able to demonstrate how libraries are still relevant, but also that we were able to address a specific student need and use the library's physical resources and space to help address this issue because it was a new issue that came up and we were able to help with that. So also on this floor, the larger study room here that isn't in the picture, this functions as the literal Zoom room. So the idea is, is that a student will have a physical private space to have the Zoom transaction of the librarian if there is a more in-depth reference question that needs to be done. So they're not at the circulation desk, it doesn't feel like an assembly line, they still have the privacy, but it's also the ease of the service being done. So you go to the circulation desk, you check in with the staff, and as a student, if you walk, if, so if you're on site and you say, you yeah, know, I'm looking for this book, but all of us know that the typical reference transaction is an amazing thing because the initial question is sometimes not always what the truly is the student's looking for. So if it turns out to be more in depth, then we have a Zoom room where the student will go, have a seat, and a reference librarian, they will connect with them. So we have a Zoom room. We have another portrait. This is Mrs. Sage. Mrs. Margaret Olivia Slocum Sage. She founded the Russell Sage College in 1916 and she was active in the women's suffrage movement. So turning around from our computer room and walking straight out again past the arts and the circulation desk, you would see um, we have a cafe, which is called Lucille's Cafe from Mrs. Shea. Sadly, this is closed because of the COVID restriction and there's no food in the library as well. And then on the other side of the front door, this is where other library staff and librarian offices are located inside this suite. So these stairs, obviously, they will navigate you to other parts of the building, second, third, and basement. It is interesting to note that while the majority of this building was changed due to the renovation, these stairs stayed exactly the same. So here we are in the basement. You will see that we have library stacks, student seating for study, and the IT help desk and staff are located down here as well. Also on this floor is the Donnelly Center for Undergraduate Research, the Center for Learning and Teaching and a smaller teaching classroom. So here is our teaching classroom that is located in the basement. This used to hold about 15 computers and it was used for the smaller sessions here. Now, obviously, we had to shrink our accuracy numbers. So we space things out safely. So going upstairs now, this is our second floor. This is what it looks like in the entry when you come off the stairs. So our seating has been spread out and there are several options of where to go on this floor. Over to the left hand side, looking towards the east, you run into our stacks again and more student space for studying and computers. Here is a shot of our main teaching classroom. This used to hold over 30 people 
and the furniture was movable and there was a lot of um, options that you could do in this room. We did teaching. I'm on the IOB committee. We met in this room. We used to be a huge round table. There's a lot you can do here with the furniture. So now um, this has a smaller capacity for space and safety. This has a smart board and a computer set up as well. So now we are on the third floor. So this is where academic services resides in the Shea Learning Center. Academic support, academic advising, disability, and the writing studio. These individual smaller rooms for study, they're actually meant for the tutoring and test taking purposes. And happily, our stacks are also on this floor as well. So now we're back to the second floor, because this is the highlight of our tour. One of our special gems is we have the Kill and Donahue collection room. So let's take a look. The Kill and Donahue portrait. This room and Donahue Memorial Poetry Collection was established in 1964 to honor Russell Sage student, Carol Ann Donahue, after she was tragically killed in a car accident. So um, yes, this room is beautiful. And we were so happy with how they renovated the library to give us this special space. So one interesting tidbit that might be interesting for you to know about is um, this poetry room was also the setting of a movie that was filmed on the Troy campus a number of years ago. So this room served as the therapist's office scenes. So the gist of the movie was this woman lost her memory and she kept having flashbacks of a train crash. And the movie is about her trying to put the pieces of her life back together. Several of us in Russell Sage were extras in the film, and it was a lot of fun. So this special collection holds approximately 9,000 poetry books. In addition to books, this collection holds broadsides, prints, and correspondence. And I'm just going to go through each of the collections briefly. So first we have the Carol and Donahue Memorial Poetry Collection. This collection contains mostly correspondence from 1965 to 1990 regarding the collection, including its beginnings, donations, acquisitions, and endowments. It also contains historical information and agreements. The Donahue Prince Collection. Prints and broadsides purchased for the Donahue Poetry Collection. The Hare Collection. H-A-R-E. This collection contains correspondence from poets, many regarding their contributions to the Carol and Donahue Memorial Collection. So it's just another view of the windows, again, the natural light and the gorgeous bookcases. So other collections are the Ian Hamilton Finley correspondence. This collection contains correspondence of mid 20th century poet Ian Hamilton Finley with other anti-guard poets of the 1960s. The correspondence dates between 1960 and 1969 with the bulk dating from 1963 to 1967. Poets on campus. Collection contains materials regarding poets' visits to Russell Sage College from 1924 to 2012. Something else prior records. This collection features correspondence, poems, jottings, worksheets that were collected for the anthology. An anthology of concrete poetry edited by Emmett Williams, which was published by Something Else Press in 1967. 
the Simon Cuts papers. The Simon Cuts papers contain poetry, manuscripts, and correspondence dating between 1966 and 1969. So before COVID and um, the safety restrictions had to happen, um, this room also hosted many poetry readings of local poets, somewhat famous people, and author readings. All of us as a students also used to do poetry events of their own. They had the poetry slams and the blackouts. This is an example of when we did the blackouts. So you would take a page of poetry, rip it out, and then black out the words that you didn't want to use. And then you would create your own poem yourself from this other piece. So that's what we did for that. And um, a few years in correlation with the English department. We have one particular professor who would help our information services librarian. Um, they would work together and some of these student poems and artwork were published in books. So that was a really great thing that they did. So that concludes the tour of the Russell Sage Library. I wanted to leave you with some beautiful views of our book displays that are done by our circulation staff and they are just gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. We'll now open it up to questions. Um, if anyone has any questions they would like to ask, um, I'll just remind you, you can use the Q&A option. Um, you can also use the chat if you're more comfortable with that. So we'll just wait a minute or two to see um, if any questions come in. And I actually do have a question. Do you have a lot of um, students coming into the poetry collection um, to look at it or like, are they allowed to take anything out or does everything have to stay in the room? Well, um, this, the poetry collection does circulate. Okay. Oh, okay, good. I see something in the chat. So the poetry collection does circulate and we can also lend them via ILL there are some items that are more valuable than others, but those are locked up. Okay. But they're still on display. Um, it is a browsable collection, and so students can come in and look. Um, this room, we just keep it exceptionally structured and clean because it's, you know, special. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. I'll take a peek at the chat. Okay. Oh, what was the movie filmed in the Danahy room? Okay. So, um, bless our say for the past few years, we've gotten some press for happily being the setting of movies. So this particular movie, it was called um, Off the Rails. And please don't poo-poo it. It did turn out to be a Lifetime movie. But it was pretty well done and it was beyond cool. But anyway, um, so when they set up here for the Donahue room, so when they set up here for the Donahue room, it was terrific. All the lighting and the equipment was in the room and the craft, I never forget it, the crafts table was in like the second floor, right outside our um, room 201 was our instructional room. And I was looking, I'm like, ooh, what kind of food do they get? But it wasn't anything special. I was kind of hoping that they would get something, you know, kind of nice, but the food was sort of so-so. Um, so we had a few professors who were filmed on campus. So they were in the movie. Um, the scenes that I happily filmed, um, I was actually at Jack's bar in Albany. I was in the bar in the bathroom. And you could actually see my profile in the shot. But in the, the therapist office, <laughs> I, was, I was texting Jen Anderson when the movie was on. And I was like, I see your bookshelves. I'm so excited. It was just beautiful. They really captured the room in that movie. So whenever she had a flashback with a therapist, that's, they were in that poetry room. But the movie is called Off the Rails. So 
I don't think it has really strong DVD sales or anything, but it does exist. Very good. And I see um, Susan put a question in the chat. Okay. So it, so she has that there if you wanted to. I couldn't figure out as a panelist how to put my question in Q&A. Oh. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I don't think panelists can. So if a panelist has a question, they can put it in the chat. Yeah, feel free. But also, um, I just wanted to say uh, James Franco filmed the movie in downtown Troy, and I guess they use Sage for a little bit of it as well. And um, I think the Sage backdrop, it seems to mimic New York City quite well, especially in the fall, because the colors are just beautiful. Here. Yeah, Susan, you want to yeah, so my question in the chat, like I said, I couldn't figure out how to put it in Q&A, um, is, is your library open regular or reduced hours during the pandemic and um, related, like I know some places count people, do you ever have to have people, I, I really liked how you have the, um, you know, the standing Zoom meetings and I'm wondering how that works okay. with yeah. the count as well. Like, do people ever have to wait outside to get in or whatever? Um, I would be happy to uh, talk about that. I'm just looking at the, can I see a list of participants? Oh, also, oh, Lisa is here. Okay, um, my library director, Lisa is here. I don't want to misspeak or speak inappropriately, but I would be happy to talk generally. But if Lisa wants to chime in, please do. So, um, Yes, we are actually open, just like normal. Our library hours did not change. We were so happy. Um, I think all my, from the access, oh, hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So would you like me to continue the question or do you just oh, want to do. jump in? Oh, please do. Okay. So um, to answer your question directly, our library hours did not change from last year. We're still open Monday through Thursday to eight o'clock. We still have student workers in the library. Um, we're still open on Sundays. So our library hours did not change. Um, we were, um, uh, so our doors are open, students come in. From my, from my own perspective, I think because we have the hybrid model and students are taking classes online as well as in person, our attendance numbers are still good. We were given some ideas about if we had to count, but our attendance numbers are not that heavy where it became a problem. So we don't physically literally see too many people around. You know what I mean? Our library traffic is steady, but it's not overly crowded or anything. And um, on our library website, we created a COVID reopening guide and we outlined all the things that had changed and didn't change, but we're just mainly open. Our student workers work the front desk, the library staff that are in the building, we're able to socially distance because of our offices, then circulate, we're still doing interlibrary loan. Um, our, our instruction has changed because all of our instruction is virtual via Zoom. We don't go into the classrooms anymore. And, um, that's the gist that I have. Uh, Lisa, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, Regina, I think you pretty much covered it. We're, we're trying to keep our regular hours um, uh, throughout the semester up until Thanksgiving, and then we're puzzling what to do after that. But uh, our traffic is a little bit lower than it's been in the past, but we're, we're hanging in as much as we can to keep our regular hours. And I also thought it was important it's really important from a public relations standpoint that your library is open and appears inviting and safe for your students because there is this wonderful concept about your library is like the second or third home for your student, for your college student, and they still needed us. So I'm glad we tried it. Does that help? 
That's great. Thank you. Um, there is another question that came in through the chat. Do alumni have the same access to the library as current students? Um, alumni, we will slowly um, limit in the access to begin with these past few years, especially with our databases, because you have to be an on, you have to be a current stage person to use our databases. Um, so the alumni was sort of a gray area because we are not open to members of the public anymore. We are clearly just open to students only because they were primarily tested before they came back on campus. We were all tested before they came back. Lisa, do you want to address the alumni? Uh, a little bit. Um, the other thing that changed this semester for the first time, we have had in the past uh, QFOB access for students during the evenings after 5 p.m. And when the pandemic came through, we said, well, gee, maybe we should re-examine that. So now our, unfortunately, our front doors are locked all the time. And uh, even during our daytime hours, we have issued key fobs to all the students for to allow them entry into both libraries. So the same would apply to alums. If they were coming on campus this semester, they'd have to stop at public safety and do a, uh, a check, uh, a COVID check, uh, or fill out a form with them, and then they'd get access to the library through public safety. Okay, great, thank you. I don't see any additional questions right now. Go up here. So I can leave it open just another minute or so um, to see if any additional ones come in. Um, so if there's anything you want to add, Regina, feel free to. I really uh, can't think of anything, but I'm okay. so glad to help today and show off Russell Sage Joy Campus Library. We're very proud. Great, thank you. Um, you did get a, uh, a thank you in the, in the Q&A. The library is really beautiful. Thank you for showing it off. So that's in there, so. So yes, thank you for taking the time and um, you know, setting up the tour. I wish it could have been in person. Um, you know, as we had scheduled this prior to um, all of the, the shutdowns, but this was a great alternative and we still all got to see everything um, that Sage has to offer. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was nice to see all of you. Nice to see you too. All right. I hope everyone has a great day and thank you for attending our virtual tour. Bye. Bye.